Well, I'm kind of curious for you guys, because I asked earlier, do you think that Elon is principally concerned with freedom of speech or making money? And we kind of got an answer of both, but I think at some point you have to choose between one or the other. And recently you had Elon trying to shut down or at least put a warning to Substack links. Um, I believe Taibbi and I think other journalists completely left Twitter like completely over it, and now they exclusively post on Substack. So how do you feel about Elon's decision to, I, I guess, try to inhibit people from visiting competitor websites? Is that a question for me? Or, or anybody, yeah. Go ahead, I've been hogging the time here. I mean, I, I mean, I'll just say briefly, Substack was basically empowered by Twitter. I love Substack, and I think that what Elon is doing is not about a free speech issue, but that they are a Twitter competitor, and that Twitter is barely, basically hanging on this revolution. So I think by him blocking that, he's doing something to save the platform. That doesn't mean I agree with it. I don't think it's being done as an anti-free speech movement. It's being done kind of like Yahoo was blocking uh, YouTube when it first launched, you know, 16, 17, 18 years ago. I mean, ago. this is anti-freedom of speech for to protect well, your pockets, though, also, right? Well, but he also said that he wasn't actually blocking. If you looked at the, if you looked at the links, there was a warning. The but same they thing with the New York Post story for Hunter Biden weren't. initially, too, though, right? There was no, a warning was, when you clicked off. That was, that was pulled. No. Yeah. I'm not defending the warning labels on the Substack links, hey, but I am saying that it was a warning label. And in terms of if Musk is defending free speech on the platform or trying to make money, he won't be able to defend free speech if the platform doesn't make any money. So now violations of freedom of speech are okay as long as it protects the pocket of the owner so that he continue to run the no, company. No, no, I no, 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 no
We're all focused on Twitter because they release the files. The other big tech does it even worse and more sophisticated. Yeah. And I think that's what Luke's saying. But I think your question is reasonable. Face Facebook ran psychological studies seeing how they can manipulate people's emotions through the algorithm, trying to make them out out outraged, trying to make them sad, trying to make them feel happy. They were able to do psychological studies. The things that Facebook does, they know when you're about to take a shit. All right, These motherfuckers are up your fucking... Ass with so much private metadata that, that we can't even imagine, we can't even fathom. And I think when we criticize big tech social media, yes, let's criticize Twitter. Twitter could do better. But I think there's a bigger elephant in the room, and that's all the collusion and all the actions that big tech has been acting on, particularly from one side of the aisle, and that's that right. side it, is the establishment. It's the big globalist governmental combines controlling all of big tech, and then Twitter breaks away and we go, Elon, you're 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 exposing the censorship, but then you're protecting your platform, which I'm not even agreeing with that. I'm just saying that's a different animal what he's doing. All right, can, just to have like a basic tech conversation, are we like opposed to tailored algorithms? Is this a bad thing? Do we think or absolutely not? Um, obviously, individuals get to choose. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, individuals should be able to choose, but private companies get to choose whatever, whatever algorithms they want. But when they're politically motivated, when they create echo chambers, when they create conversations when that are dominated... When they block other algorithms, yeah. I think it should all be open and free. Yeah, when they radicalize individuals that only hear their voice and not opposing viewpoints, and there's no actual logical debate, and you only hear one side talking shit about the other side and becoming more emotional and more enraged. Sure, so I, think, I, I, think, well, I think there deserves to be a discussion about our ability to what we're curated and what we want to see, because at the end of the day, what we subscribe is what we should see. And but by the way, what happening. Luke just said is the answer to everything. Go back to YouTube and, and Google and all of it. It's, it's a parent company 20 years ago. They on purpose put us in groups and then put the most radical in there to push those groups to divide us and make us a new country. And I was part of that. I didn't know I was being used, but they were pushing me because they could take out of context a few things they liked that were radical or crazy. And, and, and so, I, But I didn't do it on purpose. So exactly what Luke just said, I, you can't ban algorithms, you can't ban that, but we should be aware of it. But absolutely, they set up the algorithm that made the left wing so crazy, that made the right wing so crazy, that turned this country into what we are. Well, also, it's these it, it's the algorithm on TikTok and Tumblr and all of these other things that in, um, contribute to the social contagion of trans among kids and teens. And I think that's a problem. Yeah, so, okay, like so San Francisco, 40% of the kids are trans or whatever? I, no, I don't think that's true. Um, so I think it's something like that. It, well, 40% of Republican discourse might be about trans people, but I don't think 40% of kids are trans. Okay. No, no, there are school um, districts where 40% of the kids say they are not. There, there was a YouGov poll where Republicans think that 40% of the population is trans. I think that's, what's, no, that's no, no. what we're thinking of right now. No, no, that there are some school districts. I'll look it up. There are some school districts where 40% of the kids, it's not trans. They think they're of the 100, 200, whatever it is, things. Why? I mean, I, there was also Why the was story there, that spread like wildfire that kids were getting kitty litter boxes in their school that came from like a Joe Rogan episode that, that was completely was a fake as well. fake story. Completely but, fake. But why was, I mean, why has there been a 4,000% increase in girls identifying as trans? Yeah, there's no doubt this is, a, are, are you denying that if you turn mainstream television on, you're just hammered? Like, like everybody hates a Coca-Cola ad or a Chevy ad or whatever you're being hammered with. You look at any mainstream culture, it's trans, 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 trans. I mean, are we denying that? I don't even know what we're talking about right now. Are we, are, we, is there, are we moving to trans issues now? I thought we were talking about social media and how to like moderate no, social I media. Mean, then we talked about algorithms. What, what I think the there's corporations a lot of interesting. Well, no, no, I, I think I think I think this is important, okay? Because I notice that when these panels happen, you guys never actually say anything. We move from crazy topic to crazy topic to crazy topic. I think that there's a. I think yeah. there's a I think there's a really fascinating and interesting discussion that can happen about algorithms. So, for instance, you guys earlier were being critical that algorithms radicalize people. Well, is it the job of a social media platform to put content in front of you that you might not want to watch? If somebody watches a video by the Young Turks, does, are you saying that the next video that should be recommended should be like a, a Tucker Carlson video? Like, you, you guys throw a lot of criticism out about these companies. Really wild. No, you guys, yeah, you, you, you throw a lot of criticism cool. out about these companies, but then at the end of the day, true. you're not really like saying anything. And then we just move from like like sensationalist topic to sensationalist topic, and no. now we're talking about 40 percent of the population but, is trans. But the like, pro. No, no, no. Th this is not that hard to understand, so don't make it sound like we're talking crazy here. This is pretty simple. 
If I, as the consumer, have an easier access to certain types of content because that content aligns with the political philosophies of the executive team of that platform, that's a problem. That is what I'm trying to say. So I do not have a fundamental issue with algorithms. For example, I think that as long as the consumer can choose to turn on or off those algorithms, that's okay. The problem is when I have recommended content based on political philosophy that I did not choose because the things that I agree agree with are being purposely suppressed. That's what I have a problem with. I understand with. what you're saying, but the issue is that for a long time, I don't even know if Twitter does it, they gave consumers an option. Do you want the tailored feed or do you want the chronological one? I believe when Elon bought Twitter, he brought back the chronological one. Nobody wants that. Consumers don't want the ability to look. That's great if there's a few people in the audience. How do you know that? What's the data proving that? I, I what what data is proving that? Because that was just <laughs> rolled out, right? What? So like how do we that. know that's true? Because I just want to ask you if you could clarify, uh, how do we know people don't want because that? Because I personally, I, per choose. I personally use it. I like it, and I haven't seen any data released like highlighting that argument. Because, I mean, the data is that every company is moving in this direction because no, it's no, getting no. Okay. Okay. Every company is at a higher thing. level. You, yes. can, you can talk Not about true. algorithms all day, but then there was the pre-programmed lie with COVID government corporate disinformation on every channel the last three years. What I don't want, algorithms are one thing, but I don't want a force-fed corporate big pharma lie put in all the tops of the feeds. That's the algorithm I don't want. It's not even an algorithm. It's we're going to force this down your throat. I'm going to answer your question, Stephen. I think it's a good one. I think that private companies, if they spin up a social network, have the right to show you whatever algorithm they want. If they want to show you dog dicks all day, even when you search for women, even when you search for cartoons, they show you dog dicks. It's their company. They can do whatever they want. But when a company gets to the size of acting in the commons, it takes on another another meaning, and then the code, at that point I think they can still show you whatever they want, but that code needs to be free so I can spin up my own version of the site, and if people hate their algorithm, they're gonna start using my awesome technology that's now publicly available, and then it, they'll, it'll become a I a agree, and by the way, I love how your code matches his hair. Thank you so much. It'll become a marketplace of terms of service and a marketplace of algorithms instead of a marketplace of who owns the code. The other, the sketchy thing that, that platforms do is specifically big tech, is they change the defaults. So people are put into the algorithms when, and, and what that does, which hurts creators, is that it takes away people's organic reach. So when, when they make the algorithms default, you know, that, that's when creator reach goes down drastically. You spend 10 years on Facebook to get 100,000 followers, and then suddenly you're only getting 3% reach because they decided to change the default. And then the corporate media has an unfair advantage in that situation, which is absolutely unfair to independent media creators, which needs to be called out. It's all because of their algorithm. And when it comes to the algorithm, if it was free-flowing, if people were allowed to see what they wanted to see, I, I can make that understanding that, hey, you know, maybe we could have a radicalization discussion then. But when it's curated, when it's manipulated, when we know that they could even control our emotions to the point of fine-tuning this, they could also run many kind of different operations, many different right, psyops, and they can exactly. you listen, 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 I'm, not a, I'm not a tech guy, I'm not a tech guy, but that's why every few days I delete my history just so I get the new stuff. Like, I'm not a tech guy. Isn't that what you do? You just delete the history? And then you get Wait, the I new stuff? It's a little bit more sophisticated right. than that, but... What about the guy? Wasn't well, when like I delete the history, who... I suddenly get new feeds. I... All right, bye. Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed.